That you would be mindful of us What do you see That's worth looking our way Alright, we are free, let's sing it out One voice We are free In ways that we never should be Grip of these chains. All right, like hinge of string. Here we go. And like hinge of string, and from the way my heart no longer can keep from singing, all that is within me cries for you.
in a starly manger out a door. Sing. 
angels sing, praises ring to a newborn king. Peace on earth, here with us, joy awakening at your feet we fall. One last time, all you got. for he alone. Uh, this series, The Name, 
uh, I've been speaking and preaching about over the last couple of weeks, and it's all pulled from this one verse that was written 700 years before Jesus took his first breath here on earth. 700 years, uh, Isaiah prophesied about the coming Messiah and what he was going to do for all of us, how he was going to complete uh, this broken world that we have so experienced, the dark world he was going to bring light into. And this is what Isaiah says. If you have your Bibles, follow along with me. Here's what it says. It says, to us a son is given, and the government will rest on his shoulders. And he will be called, say it with me, he will be called, say it with me, Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. He will be called all these things because in him will be the totality of all that God is. Let's pray. Father, help us today to hear from your word, open up our hearts, our minds to receive your truth. Uh, God, not just to receive it, be transformed by it. Help us as we learn today that you are an everlasting father. You're a good father. You're a father who loves at all times and cares at all times. You're a father who is there at all times. I pray that, God, you will just speak to our hearts today. In Jesus' name we ask. And everybody said, amen. So in this series, The Name, uh, I've been telling you that all of us have a name, obviously, and in there they try to give meanings to names. And I talked about my mug that my mom gave to me, and it says Kevin, and the meaning is lovable. And I've told you that while, yes, this is true at times, I am lovable, there's times I'm not so lovable. Uh, and I wanted to kind of let this be an illustration to you because all of us have different things that our name definitely means. This name that we're talking about in the name is the name of Jesus. Turn your name and say Jesus. That in his name, all these things we just read about, wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace, in his name, Jesus, are all those things combined he is all those things to all of us in different ways. Our very first week, if you missed it, our very first week I talked about the fact that he is a wonderful counselor, that he sees you, he knows where you're at. Uh, the beautiful part about our counselor, Jesus, is that uh, the Bible says we don't have a high priest that is not aware or knows our struggles, our fears, and our pains. He knows where you're at, and yet he helps us in the middle of your pain. So no matter what you're facing today, he is the wonderful counselor. He will listen to you. He will be there for you. He would care for you no matter what. He, uh, he is a wonderful counselor. I gave you three things. I said you got to be honest with the counselor. Uh, you need to be honest. You need to listen to the counselor. And you need to do what the counselor says you, for you to do. Uh, last week, we talked about the fact that he is a mighty God. And this mighty God comes with power, comes with authority, this mighty God transforms all of our life. And I said this, I said, his power works in us, his power works for us, and his power works through us into the world. Today, I want to talk about everlasting father. Turn your neighbor and say, father. Now, everlasting father, uh, how many guys uh, have a father out there? Anybody have a father out there? Raise your hands, have a father. Okay. You had a father in your life. At some point, you had a father. Every hand should be up. This is not a trick question. Every hand should be up. We all have fathers, guys. If you didn't, you're a freak of nature. We don't know what happened to you. Uh, all of us have fathers. Uh, even Jesus had a father. Uh, we all have fathers, right? Um, some of you, whenever I mention the word father, it can bring up great emotions, good emotions, Motions of a father that was there for you, a father who uh, helped you through difficult times, a father, no matter what you could do, you could call him. They were there at your beck and call, a great father. You have good thoughts of fathers. Some of you don't have that. You don't have such great thoughts about a father, a father that maybe was abusive, maybe verbally abusive or physically abusive. Some of you, whenever uh, the name father is, you have resentment and uh, you have recoil from that name because you just don't like your father and what he was to you in your life. And the challenge is in this everlasting father message today is if we're not careful, we will think of Jesus, our everlasting father, and we will think of him in the script or in the lens of our earthly father. And this is very dangerous because I'm a father. I'm a father. And as a father, 
I love my kids, but I know I'm far from being a perfect father. I know that I have fallen and failed my kids and my family at times in life. And so the, there's a pressure that comes on. Well, if we look at Jesus and we think of our earthly father as Jesus, the confusion that comes there is there's no perfection there. But with Jesus, there is perfection. So the first thing I want us to kind of step back from is, is to understand that our earthly fathers, while some are good and some are bad, they are not a complete representation of our heavenly father. And everybody out there says, thank you, Jesus. That's right. Amen. I'm glad for that. I'm glad. For that. I'm glad that I, listen, I don't want the pressure of being a perfect heavenly father. I can't make that. But through his grace and through his mercy, I could be the best father I possibly be. And here's why. Let me give you a couple of shortcomings of earthly fathers. And maybe you experienced this, maybe you didn't, uh, but all of us, it'll touch and kind of in some part of our life. Uh, if you have your notes, write these down. Earthly fathers have these shortcomings. Number one, uh, sometimes earthly fathers are never satisfied. Uh, they never can, you never can meet their expectations. Maybe you grew up with a father that no matter what you did, it just was never enough. You strived, you tried, you did your best, and yet you never heard those words, I'm proud of you. Maybe you grew up with a father that you just didn't feel loved by them. In fact, they didn't say the words, I love you. Instead, you might have grew up with words that said, you're a disgrace, or you should have never been born. I don't know why you're in my life. You might have grew up with a father who just did not have affection. So many women struggle with this in their life. So many women struggle with always trying to find and meet expectations. They never met it in their father, so then they try to meet it in their husbands, and then they don't find it there, and they try to meet it other ways. Uh, uh, the young, young girls try to get 4.0s and, and try to get on the cheer captain, and they don't go party. They go to church, and they try to do everything just right, and yet dad is never satisfied because an earthly father will always fall short. And so many times, even young men, we try to perform for our fathers. We try to excel for our fathers. We get strong like our fathers. We try to do well and successful in our fathers because we just want them to be satisfied. And so sometimes that's a challenge that we have when we look at our heavenly father like our earthly fathers, because maybe your father was never truly satisfied. Some people, in the effort to get their father's satisfaction, they just rebel, and they just become completely rebellious, and they, they rather have some kind of attention than no attention at all. These are the challenges of earthly father to heavenly father. The second thing is, maybe you grew up with a father who was always angry, always angry. Like you didn't know when to come home, you didn't know what the atmosphere was going to be like in that house because it was so tense. It was like walking on eggshells whenever dad was home, kept everything real quiet. You didn't speak unless you were spoken to. And I know I've talked to many people in, in this church that that's the way their households were. It was very much an angry, uh, an angry household with a father. Uh, your father never said, great job. Your father was always angry and, and, and called you a mistake. Uh, never did you feel the love of a father because you had, there was so much anger inside that toxic life. I found that in counseling that so many times the anger that so many fathers struggle with is not anger towards their kids, it's anger towards themselves, anger of their own failures, their own shortcomings, or maybe their own past they haven't dealt with, an earthly father who is always angry. Uh, maybe you had a father who was never satisfied. Maybe you had a father who was, never, uh, who was always angry. And the last one is maybe you just had a father who was seldom there. He wasn't angry because he wasn't there. He didn't have to satisfy him because he never was around. Maybe it was a result of a divorce home or separation, or maybe it was just an absent father. Just, he just was always gone. He never showed up. They missed everything. They missed all the first. They missed the first time that uh, the first time you got an A on your report card. 
they missed the first time, you scored that winning uh, point for whatever the game was that you did. They missed the ballet. They missed the concerts. Uh, they weren't there. The fathers were not there for that first heartbreak that you so tra- traumatically went through. Uh, some fathers have just missed a lot. Uh, they miss out on the most important things in life. And, and I'll go back to what I said before. Again, if we look at our heavenly father, our everlasting father, through the lens of how we look at our earthly father, we'll get a distorted view of who our everlasting father is. And so what I want to do for the remainder of our time is I want to shift our focus from an earthly father, whether you had a good father or you didn't have a good father, whether you're a good father or maybe you're not. It doesn't matter. It's irrelevant at this point on because all that matters is we're going to look at who our heavenly father is, who Jesus is, our everlasting father. So let's let scripture speak to us about our everlasting father. The first thing is our everlasting father is compassionate. He is compassionate. Turn your neighbor and say compassionate. He is compassionate. Here's what Psalm 103 verse 8 says. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, listen, slow to anger, abounding in love. He is compassionate. He is slow to anger. He is patient. He does not lose his patience with you. He is a Everlasting Father who always loves, who always cares, who always sees. Zero performance needed for this love that God gives you. You don't have to do anything to earn or perform for God's love today. Nothing at all. Your earthly father might have had criteria, but God does not. You know what your criteria is? Your criteria is you are created fearlessly and wonderfully made in his eyes, in his image. And he loves you. He cares for you. He sees where you're at. Uh, It doesn't matter what you do to perform for him. It doesn't matter if you, this is your first time at church. It doesn't matter if this is your 50th time or 500th time in church. It does not matter if you read your Bible or if you don't. It doesn't matter if you pray or if you never speak a word. It does not matter Anything in life that you think you can do to perform for God, you will find yourself falling short of it because there's nothing you can do because he is compassionate and his love abounds to you. His love abounds to you. It doesn't matter if you don't cuss, don't chew, and don't run with women who do. (laughs) He still loves you. He still cares for you. He is completely satisfied with you. Here's what, here's what Jesus says. Jesus says this, come to me, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened. And what does he say? And I will give you what? Rest. He doesn't say, get your life straight, get it under control. He doesn't say, You stop doing this, you stop doing that, you stop, and then you can come to me. No, he says, come. Come to me. Come to me, you who are weary, you who are burdened. Can you put that back up there, guys? You who are striving, you who are working, you who think you can do it, come to me. Come on, and I will give you rest. Take on my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am what? Jesus says, I am gentle. (laughs) I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find what? Rest for your souls. Please leave that up there, guys. He will find, you will find rest, not because you did something, but only because you come. You come as you are. You come just as you are, and you allow him to do the work inside of you to take you where he wants you to go. Rest, rest. This word, rest, is so vacant from our world today. No one's resting. No one slows. No one that I know, unless you're retired and you don't have a schedule and your kids are all grown, 
I know parents, you're running. Man, rest. You're like, I could use rest. I'm tired, right? Just running all the time. How do we get rest? I mean, in this season, in this Christmas season, the greatest thing the Father wants you to experience is not another gift. It's not one more event. It's not one more laugh. The greatest gift that God wants to give you this holiday season is his rest, his peace. It's the cease of striving to do something, to earn the love of God that you never could earn before you knew him. You cannot earn it anymore now that you know him even more. If he loved you just as you are, he's going to love you and take you and go where he wants you to go. Trust his love. Trust his rest. Know that he loves you right where you're at. And rest in who he is. He's an everlasting father full of compassion. Second thing is, he's an everlasting father who cares. He's an everlasting father who absolutely cares. He cares for you. He sees you. He is not angry with you. He is not uh, expect, has expectations. He will never abuse you. He will never mistreat you. He will never come down and, 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 and just, we, I, I, I know that there's this idea that God is up there just shooting uh, lightning bolts and daggers at people. He is a loving God, full of compassion, and he cares for where we are at in life. Do we sin? Yes. Does it make him happy? No. But his compassion and his love for us is so great. Here's, here's what, I love what Jeremiah 29, 11 says. And if you, you guys know it, you've heard it, you probably have it memorized. It's probably one of those John three sixteen memory verses that you have. It says what? For I know what? I know the plans that who has for us? He has for us. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. What is it? What are the plans? God, what is the plan you have for me? Plans to... And not to, this is God's love to you. Plans to what? Give you and a, this is God's amazing care for you. He has a plan for each and every one of you. He has a a future that you could never, ever imagine. He doesn't want you to toil He doesn't want you to strive. He wants you to come rest and realize he's got a plan. He has a plan in the middle of the greatest struggle of your life. God has a plan. It's so hard to reconcile this verse because when we go through painful places in life, we question, where are you, God? How can you be in this. If you're good, God, why does it hurt so bad? But he's an everlasting father who loves you. And he sees where you're at. And he knows the plans. And their plans to prosper you. Their plans to bring you hope and an amazing future. He's a God of compassion. He's an everlasting father of compassion. He's an everlasting father who cares. And finally, number three, he is an everlasting father who is always there. You grew up with an absent father. You grew up without a father in your life. No, no. God is an everlasting father who is always there. Whether this is your first time in church or you seldom come or you infrequently come, it doesn't matter. He is always and will forever be there. No matter if you mess up, no matter if you totally blow the whole thing, no matter if you are going good in life and you, you, you stumble in life and you, you go through a downtime, you feel completely alone, you feel, like, you feel like no one else cares, no one loves me, no one cares about me, no one sees me, I'm here to tell you, there is a father, an everlasting father, his name is Jesus, and he is always right there. In your most painful moments, he's there. In the times that you question, listen, 
Why even go on? The pain is too great. He is an everlasting Father who is always there loving you, letting you know, don't give up hope. Hebrews 13, 5 says, never will I leave you, nor never will I forsake you. You can blow every part of your life up. You can miss it 100% of the time. And God will always still be there. Does that, does that make it to where you're right with God? No, 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 that's not it. That's not, it's not about being right. It's the fact that God, being an everlasting father, he always has compassion, he's always caring, and he's always right there. Just a whisper away. He's there. In some of the deepest times of my life where I am in deep pain, and I can feel the same feelings that every one of you feel. I feel isolation. I feel loneliness. I feel there are times of failures and times when I miss the mark. I feel the same thing you guys do, and I get in a moment in time where I get my uh, pity party. I get down on myself. I get discouraged. I feel like I'm not hitting the mark. And all I say is, Jesus, I don't know what else to say. Jesus, I, I got nothing. And I have burned the candle at both ends when I have wore myself out trying to perform, trying to accomplish, trying to make people happy, trying to, to relieve uh, people's thoughts of who I am. I have to just know that God, all I can say is, Jesus, I I have nothing more. No matter how deep your pain is today, you can run to the arms of our everlasting Father. No matter how painful life can be, life is cruel. Life is not fair, never has been fair. Life is unfair. We got to learn that. We got to get it in us. It's okay. Life is unfair. Listen, if it was fair, if it was fair, Jesus would never have to go to the cross. If life was fair, he wouldn't have to go through the punishment of what the cross entailed. The brutality of the cross proves life's not fair. So get over it. Life's not fair. But guess what? You have a father who loves you through the unfairness of life. And you can run to him. And you can run to that father. And you can crawl up in his arms. And you can cry. And you can, you can ugly cry. You can lay it all out. And that father just holds you and says, it's going to be okay. I've got you. He is, Jesus is, our wonderful counselor. He is our mighty God. He is our everlasting Father. He is full of compassion, not anger. And he cares for where you're at. He sees the struggle of your life. And he will never leave you, nor will he ever forsake you, for he is an everlasting Father who is always there. Bow your heads to me today. Father God, we come before you today, and you are truly an everlasting Father everlasting Father who sees the struggles in our life. Jesus, I am moved. I am moved that you are a wonderful counselor. You are a mighty God. I'm so thankful you are my everlasting father. God, there's so many things that we struggle with in life. There's so many things in our identity that we struggle with. We strive, and yet all you call us to is rest. 
come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take on my yoke and learn from me, for my burden is light, and I will give you rest. Rest for your souls. With your head bowed and eyes closed today, some of you are just tired. Man, you're so tired. Life has been hard. You're tired. I want you to know he's there. He's just a whisper away. Jesus. Jesus, I need you. I need you, God. If you're going through it today, if you're struggling today, I'm challenging you and, 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 and just encouraging you and telling you, listen, the everlasting Father is here for you. He's just a whisper away. You need rest today? Come. You need hope today? Come. You need healing today? Come. Come to the Father, the one who does the impossible, the one who sees right where you're at. He knows every fear. He knows every struggle. And he says, it's okay. I got you. I know the plans I have for you. I know your future. Come and trust your Father who's never failed you. He will be there everlasting to everlasting. He's the everlasting Father. So God, today, would you just move upon each and every heart that is here? In the next few moments of time, God, I pray you let them know. You reveal yourself to them. You let them know that you are a father that can be trusted. You are a father that they can call on. You're a father they can run to. You're a father who sees where they're at and knows their cares, knows their concerns, and loves them right where they're at. But God, you're such a good father that you won't leave them where they're at. You'll take them to greater places. You'll do greater things inside them. So God, right now, come and prove you are a good father, an everlasting, amazing, Father. Oh, and I've heard a thousand stories of what they think you're like, but I've heard the tender whisper of love in the day. Of night, and you tell me that you're pleased and that I'm never alone. You're good, good father. It's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am. To my head. Oh, and I see many searching for answers far and wide, but I know they were all searching for answers only you provide, cause you know just what we we, we say your word, you're a good, good father. It's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am because you are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways to us. You are perfect. And you are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways to us. Oh, it's love so undeniable I, I can hardly speak peace so 
unexplainable I, I can hardly think as you call me deeper still as you call me deeper still as you call me deeper still into love 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 you're a good good father it's who you are it's who you are it's who you are and i'm loved by you it's who i am it's who i am it's who i am, it's who I am. you're a good good father it's who you are it's who you are it's who you are good father, isn't he? He loves you right where you're at. I want you to know that as we celebrate Christmas, if I can see, speak anything into you, it's that come to me and find rest. It's real easy to get caught up in all the holidays and even with church schedule, honestly, even with the church schedule and everything we have going on, it's real easy to, to, to just keep striving and going without really ever taking a moment to pause. Uh, in, in the Bible, whenever it's talking about Mary and on the night that Jesus was born, it says these words. It says, and Mary pondered these things in her heart. It means she took them in. She savored them because she knew they'd be short-lived before life went on. So if I can encourage you to think, rest in him. Can I pray rest over you guys this holiday season? Bow your heads with me today. Father, I pray against anxiety. I pray against fear in the name of Jesus. No, no, I don't pray against I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. And I pray for there to be rest, for there to be peace, God. For there to reside in these, in, in these minds and in these hearts, in these families, God, in their future, in their coming, in their going this holiday season. God, I pray, let there be rest in their lives. So God, I cover them right now. I pray over them. Go with them and keep them in your hands as they walk in your rest. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. God bless you guys. Thanks for being here. We'll see you Wednesday night.